Let me first of all give you an overall picture of this situation. First of all, let's take a couple of examples of blessings. The first is in Genesis 22, where Abraham had just been willing to offer up his son Isaac in response to the Lord's uh, requirement. And then at the last moment, the Lord provided a ram to be offered instead of Isaac. And then the Lord spoke to Abraham from heaven. And he said in Genesis 22 verse 16, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son, in blessing I will bless you, and in multiplying I will multiply your seed or your descendants as the stars of heaven and as the sand which is on the seashore, and your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. Notice that the blessing was going to go on to Isaac's descendants. And then it says, In your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. It's very important to notice the reason for the blessing. Because Abraham obeyed God's voice. That is the basic reason for the blessing of God. Then if you look on a little further in Genesis chapter 27, you find how Isaac blessed his son Jacob. But the strange thing is, if you remember the story, that Isaac thought he was blessing Esau, who was the firstborn. But while Esau was off hunting the venison, which Isaac had asked for, uh, Rebekah, Isaac's husband, substituted Jacob, who was her favorite son, and in order to get away with the deception, because Isaac was blind, she dressed Jacob up in Esau's clothes and cooked a kid of the goats instead of the venison, serving it up the way her husband liked it, and took the skin of the kids of the goats and wrapped them around uh, Jacob's neck and arms so that he would seem hairy like Esau, because Jacob was a very smooth man and Esau was a very hairy man. So along comes Jacob pretending to be Esau and Isaac checks and says, are you my son Esau? And Jacob says, yes I am, he told a lie. And then Isaac blessed him and this is the blessing, I'll read it. Uh, beginning of verse 24, then he, Isaac said, are you really my son Esau? <laughs> he must have felt there was something strange. And he said, I am. And Isaac said, bring it near to me and I will eat of my son's game so that my soul may bless you. I think you have to see that Isaac was a little bit carnal. He wanted his stomach filled with his favorite food before he could pronounce the blessing. And then I, 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 years ago I gave a teaching on how a wrong attitude to food corrupted the family life of Isaac. I wish I could do it today but I can't. So he brought it near to him and he ate and he brought him wine and he drank. Then his father Isaac said to him, come near now and kiss me, my son. And he came near and kissed him. And he smelled the smell of his clothing, remember it was Esau's clothing, and blessed him and said, surely the smell of my son is like the smell of a field which the Lord has blessed. Therefore may God give you of the dew of heaven, of the fatness of the earth, and plenty of grain and wine. Let people serve you and nations bow down to you, be master over your brethren, and let your mother's sons bow down to you. Cursed be everyone who curses you, and blessed be those who bless you. Understand that blessing was tremendous in its scope, and it went on from generation to generation. Now, a little while later, in comes Esau with the venison, tries to offer it to his father, and his father realizes he's been deceived, and that he blessed Jacob when he thought he was blessing Esau. But listen, this is... Uh, Isaac's reaction in verse 33 when he discovers the deception then Isaac trembled exceedingly and said who where is the one who hunted game and brought it to me I ate all of it before you came and I have blessed him and indeed he shall be blessed isn't that amazing because Isaac thought he was blessing Esau but he knew the words that he'd pronounced didn't come from himself, do you understand? It was a prophetic blessing, and because it was prophetic, he couldn't unsay it. So 
Jacob got the blessing, Esau didn't. But I want you to see the nature of blessing, that it's supernatural. It's not just a wishful thought. It's not just kind sentiments. It's something that is in supernaturally empowered and determines people's destinies. That's true alike of blessing and curse. Now, we're going to turn to the opposite theme, curses. First of all, I'd like to turn for, for a moment to Proverbs 26, verse 2. Proverbs 26, 2. Like a flitting sparrow, like a flying swallow, so a curse without cause shall not alight. That's very important. If there is a curse, there's a cause for it. And in many cases, in order to be released from the curse, it's important to discover the cause. The curse never comes causeless. Now I'm going to look at some sources of curses, different sources of curses. First of all, God himself. God has many times pronounced a curse on nations, on individuals. It's one of God's severest forms of judgment. I'd like to look first of all at the calling of Abraham in Genesis chapter 12. This is where God called Abraham when he was still called Abraham to go out from his city, Ur of the Chaldees, and so on. And there is actually seven stages to this call. If you look in Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. Now the Lord has said to Abraham, Get out of your country, from your kindred, and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. Now note the sevenfold calling of Abraham. Number one, I will make you a great nation. Number two, I will bless you. Number three, I will make your name great. Number four, you shall be a blessing. Number five, I will bless those who bless you. Number six, I will curse him who curses you. And number seven, in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. That's the sevenfold call of Abraham and God's sevenfold destiny for Abraham. But notice the sixth one is a curse on everyone who curses Abraham. I will bless those who bless you and I will curse him who curses you. And you see that goes for Abraham and his descendants, Isaac, Jacob, Israel and the Jewish people. That's a very important point for all of us to see. When God calls a man to a special task, that man becomes the target of Satan's enmity in a special way. And so God built in a protective clause for Abraham. He said, I will curse him who curses you. What's that in modern language? What is it that curses the descendants of Abraham? What's the word we use? Anti-Semitism, that's right. So you see, God curses anti-Semitism. In other words, anti-Semitism brings a curse from God. That's God's protection of the Jewish people. And you surely have to agree they've needed it. So there's one factor, maybe that affects the life of some of you. Maybe you or your parents or your ancestors have been enemies of the Jewish people. You've spoken against them, you've criticized them, you've cursed them. Understand that will bring a curse on you and your life. 